to BanjoBenClark.com. This is your bluesy host, Banjo Ben, here at your favorite website to learn how to play mandolin guitar. And this week is Banjo Week. I do this each and every week. Produce about a 30-minute video lesson with tabs, downloadable MP3s for my Gold Pick members over there on the website. I love this bluesy backup. When I was in college, I started playing banjo, but I was a big country music fan. Real country, not the stuff that's on the radio now. Anyway, I love Merle Haggard, especially that working man blues type rhythm. And I would work some of that into my banjo playing and, uh, and use that on slower backup. I want to teach you that today. Let me tell you what we're going to do. There's uh, seven different, or six or seven different rhythms or licks that we're going to learn. <laughs> stuff like that that's really cool. But then what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to take those anywhere over the neck. So you can play back up in the key of E flat with no capo using this kind of stuff. That's what I like about this stuff. It's just there's no open string, so it's transferable anywhere. We're going to learn how to play over a 12-bar blues progression in the key of G um, in, in the video lesson here. Uh, then if you jump over on the website, you can download the tabs in both PDF and TEF file form. I have three different speeds of downloadable MP3s, just 12-bar uh, blues and G, that you can use to, to build your own backup uh, arrangement out of this stuff. I'm really excited about it. Let's dive into measure one. So let's look at rhythm number one, starting at measure one there. All, almost all of these licks happen in the middle three strings. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, play the same strings with the same fingers each time, even though I do have them labeled there beneath the, the notes, just in case you forget, but our thumb's always going to play that D string, our index is always going to play that G, and then our middle is always going to play that B, and we're going to stay bass out of um, kind of this G position here, what I call uh, the Y position, that's 5th fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret, but we're not going to make that complete chord position, we're going to um, be playing the the chord note, the tonic tone, with our ring finger there. And it's gonna, let's just go ahead and place it on the fifth fret. And the hardest thing about this is not going to be um, our actual technical playing. The hardest thing is going to be to count it correctly. Okay? Um, but the first rhythm number one just sounds like this. I'll play it slowly, then we'll talk about it. So we're going to start out on that 5th fret of the low D string, play it once. This is an 8th note this time. It's going to vary in the future. And then what I'm doing is I'm barring the 3rd fret, the middle 2 string, the G and B string, at the 3rd fret. I'm barring it. And so I'm going to pinch it next. So I'll play the low D string, then pinch, and then hammer with my middle finger to the 4th fret of the G string. Can you do that? Now leave everything down, come back down and play this G low D string again, and now we're going to flatten out our ring finger, flatten it out, and we're going to bar across the fifth frets of the G and B string. And what this is going to do is we're going to get those notes, but unless you have really, really huge fingers, bigger than mine, you're probably not going to... Uh, be able to keep pressing down that D string, your finger's going to kind of come off of it, and that's fine. It's going to make kind of a dead note, and that actually sounds better whenever we play it again. Okay, so we're going to flatten out, and then pinch that, come back to that dead string. If you actually, if you do fret it, that's fine, and then do another hammer-on, and then land again. So one more time, very slowly. Watch and listen. And I could probably play it where I keep this fifth fret fretted down. But I think it sounds better to have that little dead note. Okay? And that's just a very basic rhythm that takes up essentially just one measure, four beats of counting. And I can take that and I can play it in any over any chord that I want. So if I needed one measure of backup, bluesy backup, over a uh, A chord, then I could just scoot up two frets. If I needed it in C, D, okay, I can take it anywhere I want. Now that's pretty much almost all the moves we're going to have. Now we're going to talk about messing with the timing and getting all kinds of funky little rhythms out of it. And as we look at the rhythm pattern number two, starting in measure three, the biggest thing to notice right off the bat is that our very first note is a quarter note. So we're going to give it a little bit more time. We're not going to go right into that hammer on. 
We're gonna give it a full beat, one and, and then I want you to hammer on. And now we've got a couple eighth notes in a row. Three and, and then we're going to come back to the fifth fret. So that's just measure three. So measure three sounds like this. One and two and three and four and. And if you have trouble with this timing, you have to download my TEF file that I have here on the site. That TEF file is a, a, a file made by the program Tabletta, and you can get the free reader. I've got a video on the site showing you how to do it, and it will play this tab for you, and you can control the tempo. So you'll know if you're getting your timing right or not, because you'll play along with it. You can slow it all the way down. One and two and three and four and. And what we're going to do here in measure four is just continue this lick on some more. So measure four sounds like this. Hammer, bum, 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 da, da. So let's just play very slowly measures three and four. It sounds like this. I'll count along. Ready, go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. It's almost hard to hear it slow. But when you do it up to speed, now you're starting to get the groove, right? You're starting to hear what it sounds like. It's that really galloping, syncopated feel. Good stuff. Now when we get to rhythm number three, this is where it really gets cool.